we're launching into our new series, uh, launching into this beauty of on the wings of hope. And, and dear Linda, I see you came dressed up all for it uh, on the wings of hope. Hope is a passion. Hope is uh, something that you're not just dreaming of becoming, but you're wanting to become it. You know, oftentimes people they dream of things. Uh, their aspirations in life, they dream of them, but actually, so much of the time, they actually keep the dreams out there. They don't necessarily want them to become real, mm. uh, because then you have to deal with it. Um, so, but hope is like, no, we, we want it tangible. We want it here right now. One of the biggest issues on the planet right now is that there is hopelessness, oh, right. more so than than I can recall in a long time. How do we go from a planet of hopelessness? How do we go from a planet of such imbalances and a planet of where there is tremendous amount of old karma and anger and everything else? How do we go from that to Jamie's time just 20 years away? Mm. Let's talk first about the probabilities for the planet. Probabilities are what's probably going to happen. Based on the current tra trajectory of the planet, a statistician would look and say, you know, the future doesn't look real great. Uh, there's some bright spots here and there, but all in all, this is the path that the planet's on. The statistician knows nothing about light coming into the planet or consciousness or any of that. They're simply using data uh, and projecting into the future. And they don't think of things like hope or dreams or aspirations or any of that. They just look at data. So to them, yeah, the world's not on a real good path. But, and, we look at potentials. That's what we do as Chambra. We look at the underlying energies. We look at the underlying causes. We look at not just uh, the data in front of us, but what's really underneath mm -hmm. and, and above. The dreamers like you, the ones who understand love like you, understand that the potentials can be very, very real. It's not a, it's not a pipe dream. It's not a moonshot. And when you start living in that potential, when you start imagining that potential, it starts to happen. Perhaps with that goodness of the human soul, and with the factor of love, especially Love 2.0, Jamie's existence in 20 years from now isn't just a dream, but it's actually real, brought about by hope. Suddenly, the desire to battle wasn't there. The desire to, for greed wasn't there. In this shifted world, there, wasn't, there was no tolerance anymore for for abusive leaders and, and power and for corporations taking advantage of, of people. Uh, it just wasn't there anymore. It was, like, it was like the planet suddenly had this huge shift into their own goodness, into their own human soul. And it may seem like some far-flung potential, but it is a possibility a very, very strong potential. That's why it happens. But there's another reason. It's the and. The and is acknowledging that there are multiple potentials, multiple realities. You're no longer stuck in this single form of, of reality. You might be going through some struggles in your life right now. You might have a uh, let's say, a love relationship that's um, not good. And it's causing a lot of stress and tension, and it's affecting your health, your energy, everything else. And you don't have that love calamity. Not at all. This isn't a mental thing about saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mentally tell myself, uh, no, I don't have any love problems. No, you got both. You have the and. You have the reality of what you're living through right now with that love situation, and you don't. 
You start to live in both worlds. You start to understand you're not trapped in this one reality base here. You start to understand that the and is ever present and you can feel into it, you can allow into it, you can be it anytime you want. You say, I'm just having financial problems and there is the reality where you don't. And that reality is as real as your financial problem, but your emotional self is anchored in the financial difficulty part rather than the abundance part. You feel into both of them. Which feels more suited to you now? Which feels better? As you go into the end, you'll have a much better idea why certain things have happened in your life, what, what you were getting from a situation. But as you go into the end, you realize that you're no longer trapped. You're no longer a prisoner. You start living in the true end of things. In your house, in your beingness, there are many mansions. There are many dimensions. It's not about just choosing one or the other. It's about being aware of all. You are all things. Now, which one do you want to live? Which one do you want to bring in reality? Which ones do you want to bring into reality? This is all about recognizing potentials. This is all about 2044. Where will you be? Will you be in one or more of the ands? Will you be in the reality of that Jamie's in with the the beauty and the ease of life? Or stay in the reality where there's still hardship and wars, famine and drought, or both or none? This is what a master can do. This is what a truly what Merlin does. This is what a, a master masters. The and it's the wings of hope. It allows us to soar beyond probabilities and into the highest potentials. Some would call it magic. To me, it's just plain good physics.